everyone. I'm going to be talking to you today about 3D scanning. So what you see on the camera now is actually a small light box and a Lazy Susan that I like to use when I'm doing small items for 3D scanning. We'll have a similar setup for the Makerspace. So first things first, I'm going to turn on my lights around the light box and you should see the lighting change a little bit. This is just to get a more consistent light situation for the scan. And then you'll see I have a few different things I might scan today. So I'm gonna put one in front. This is a little owl. Um, so typically when I'm 3D scanning, I wanna put something right at the center of the Lazy Susan. If you are not using a little light box like this to 3D scan, the most important thing is that Instead of moving the Lazy Susan, we would be moving around our object. And that's because for 3D scanning, it's really important to keep the background consistent. Because I'm sort of operating in this all white light box, it's okay to scan with this. But in other situations where I'm using photogrammetry, I would be doing something different. So just to show you, another good item for scanning would be something like this cow. Part of the reason is that these are both matte objects. I'll put that all back on so you can see it. Um, if we're trying to scan something that's shiny, the light refraction really does not work well. So you need to coat that with something. Um, we've, I've used everything from athlete's foot spray. There's special um, sort of coating that you could use that's used more for industrial purposes. Um, something that you can get on and take off. I've seen baby powder use, things like that. So. When we're 3D scanning, we typically want to move about 10 degrees at a time as we're taking our photos. And we really want those photos coming from three different angles. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the camera a little bit. So that might be angle one, this might be angle two, and then above the object might be angle three. And since we're moving 10 degrees at a time, we're really looking for 36 photos at each angle. So we're looking for around 100 photos for the item. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take those photos. And then from there, I'll go into the editing software and show you how to do a bit of editing. I'm gonna go ahead and start with the owl. Hello everyone. We're going to be talking about how to take our photos and make them into a 3D model uh, through photogrammetry or 3D scanning. So first things first, we use Autodesk Recap. It's gone through several iterations um, of software and changes, but the current software is called Recap. And that's what we use to make our 3D models. So the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to sign up for an education account. This is important because Autodesk does allow for students and faculty to have a three year account for free. Um, and that allows you access to lots of products within the Autodesk suite, including Recap. Um, so the first thing to do is to look for Autodesk Education. So if I click on here, you'll see there is a site. You can click on free software and sort of get an introduction as to what could be provided to you. The site we want to go to to get the education account is under Learn and Teach, and that redirects you to this Academy site. When you click on the Join Today button, you'll see it says here Autodesk Education Account. That is going to allow you to have that three-year access. So it's really important to create an account through this site, and you'll see when you click on it, you have this Educational Role button come up. Um, versus just signing up for a free Autodesk account. So that's first things first um, to make sure you get set up with that. Next, we're gonna look at recap and getting our photos uploaded to it. I just actually updated recap. I am gonna go ahead and open it and drag and drop it over back over in the screen so you guys can hopefully see it. So there we are, that is recap. So how do we get our photos or our project into this software? Um, first, you want to click on, well, first of all, sign in. So I have my education account. And I'm going to sign in here. Next. And then it's, let's see. 
I'm not going to do that for now. I'm going to go ahead now and go to new project. From here, you'll see the photo to 3D option. That's the option we want for 3D scanning. Now, what do, this does that's interesting is it then brings you into this piece called Recap Photo. These used to be two separate softwares, but now they are integrated. So we can find everything all in one place. Um, you can see here, you if you were using a drone, you could do an aerial 3D, or if you were doing an object 3D, you would want to do that. So, so I'm going to go ahead and find my files, which are on my Canon camera. So you'll see here I have the numerous photos of the owl. So I'm going to select all of my owl photos. I think that's all of them. Go ahead and open. So I have 66 photos selected. Uh, again, it's important to make sure you have that education site set up. There are some restrictions on how many photos you can upload if you have the EDU account versus a regular account. So I will call this OWL project. And I'm not going to auto crop. So what that's going to do down here is you'll see it's going to start uploading your photos into your cloud drive. I have a few other projects that I've done. Um, I have some pictures of them actually. So um, a student and I actually did this at one point, but we did uh, the PSU Panther and he actually edited it in a 3D modeling path, uh, software. And then I also have um, some items for our archive. This one in particular is one I uh, took a photo of to show you. So I'll bring those up now so you can see them. Um, and I have some student projects and other things that have been done over time. So once you have your photos uploaded in here through that object part, um, it's going to attempt to render your 3D model. This can take time because it's going over to Autodesk servers to process. So at this point, I'm going to take a break in the video and we'll come back once this model has been loaded so you can take a look at what that looks like. Lastly, I'm going to bring the model into Mesh Mixer, another Autodesk software, just to show you some basic editing skills uh, and how to get that model ready for something like 3D printing. Just as a quick update and point of information, it's been about one hour since I uploaded my photos to the Autodesk Cloud Drive, and as you can see, they're still processing. Another point of information I wanted to pass on to be more clear, the education account for Recap and Recap Photo is limited to 100 photos per scan. So be sure when you are scanning that you are just using 100 photos. It can take up to about, I think Autodesk has said about 24 hours for your educational upload. So if it doesn't get done right away, that's okay. It's something you can come back to, but just remember if you're working, don't keep your scans too close to a deadline because it's going to take a while for them to upload in the server, create a 3D model, and then you'll have to do some editing from there if you need to 3D print or if you want to 3D print your object. Uh, thanks. All right. Hello, everyone. We are into about the next day from when we ran our download, which I knew would be the case. So. You can see here on my account, now that it has been a bit of time, uh, it says ready to download and I can download my object. So I will make a folder on my local machine and just call it a project. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my desktop. So after that, you'll see you end up with this RCM file. That is your 3D file that we want to work with. And so clicking here, you'll see, wow, this is a pretty awesome model I got here um, for my little owl. So again, it's all about choosing the right kind of object and then also taking enough photos to get a good scan. Recap sort of does the rest. 
So there's a few edit tools here. You can see you can do a little bit in this software. The tool I really like to use is the selection tool because what I like to do before I bring my object into a program like Mesh Mixer is get rid of some of the excess. And I know in this case, I don't need all of the Daisy Susan. So I might go around, start deleting some of that excess before I export my object as either an OBJ or an STL, depending on how I'm feeling, <laughs> really. <laughs> OBJ contains color information, STLs do not. So that is the big difference when you're going between the two is whether or not you actually want that color information. So at this point, that looks pretty good to me. around him again. I'm going to try to get rid of that background a little bit more. This was an awesome scan. So now that I've sort of gotten rid of that excess and I feel good about it, at this point I would export my model. You can also do it as a video as you see here if you just wanted to sort of show the model somewhere or as just an image. You can see here, I'll just set it up. You can do STL, OBJ, all these different kinds of files. I'll go ahead and do OBJ. And pretty much all of the other settings, there's even a quick export here that I wanted to show you. So this would be, if you're bringing into a specific program, you can see everything from Blender, which is an amazing free CAD software, to a lot of the Autodesk programs, 123D Make, um, and especially Tinkercad might be another big one. Um, you could go ahead and do it. So they have Mesh Mixer OBJ. I'll go ahead and export it that way. We'll, we'll up the quality a little bit to medium. So with that, it's going to export my model. And this is really all of the, the first steps and everything you need to know about using Recap. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to send me a message or post one on this video, and I will try to get back to you. Thanks.